Morning guys, how you all doing? Welcome back to the channel. This morning I'm just out near my secret little barbell swim. Been here about 10-15 minutes. Got down at first light, just stepped up. Just lost a really big fish under the tree. Second cast on worm. I locked and hailed it, but it just came off. Must have been in the branch, I felt a little bit of a jarry sort of movement. But what I thought I'd do is, I'm just starting off on the ledger again, just to perform. I'm just quite sparingly feeding it today. I came across the last couple of days and just been putting a few handfuls of hemp in it with meat, and that's what I've got today. I've got casters, I've got a little bit of corn, I've got paste, I've got lunch and meat, but what I did yesterday, I boiled up a load of hemp. I've got some like two mil, four mil size bits of meat in there, not a lot. So it's like two thirds of a tin, which chopped up nice and small. The rest I've got for hook bait, with a bit of spicy sausage as well. Yeah, I've got some bits of meat, which I could probably cut a bit smaller if need be. I've got my blue cheese paste and I've got my spicy sausage paste, enduja paste, with garlic in that in it. But I'm just literally feeding a couple of small handfuls, no, I don't know, a dozen or so bits at a time. I want to sort of like just nurture the peg a bit more today. Keep the uh, feed going in very little and often, but what, what I'm doing is I've just put a pellet on here. I bought some uh, four mil halibut pellets, which again I've just put like literally a dozen pellets in, and I've got an eight mil halibut pellet on a band. I'm going to sit and wait for that because the worms are just getting ragged off by everything within seconds before I can even put the feeder on the rest, the rod on the rest. And the vibrations, pat, 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 pat. So, um, I know that's how I got the other barber last time. So. There's plenty of slugs around today as well. So I'm going to go harvest a few slugs in a minute. But what my initial plan is, I haven't set it up yet, but I'm going to set it up in a minute, is a stick float rod to run right on the far side of these trees. Where that hole is, we've got the feeder. I'm feeding just to the left of that tree, or sort of like, and then in line. Because what I want to do today is, and then just run the stick float down the peg. Just want to run it down the peg along the line of those trees. So that's why I don't want to feed too far across today. I know that's where they live and I can always poke a, a bomb and pellet over there or a bit of paste over there right in if I need to. But I want to try, if I can, draw them out just enough. I'm going to put my bait literally on the line of those trees. So in a minute, I'm going to set the stick float rod up, plumb up, and I just want to trot, literally hugging them trees all the way down. Just with tiny bits of meat, small bits of meat. I'm going to get that set up and I'll get back to you. Okay, I've set the stick rod up. And while I was doing that, I got an absolute slam round on the pellet wrapped in a bit of paste. Well, I was up the bloody bank as usual. Setting the rod up and I missed it. The rod went wanging round. So I'm not putting the bait runner on, it's here. But I've just had a quick little few runs through. I plumbed up. Actually, a bit deeper than what I was expecting. And I've had uh, two days and I just had a perch. I put a size 12 cameras and B520 on. And I've got a. Because I want to put small bits of meat on. But the meat is just getting ragged straight away. I had two little days. But, um, 
maybe just persevere with it. I've gone quite heavy. I've got a um, 15 foot rod, this moment leader, assassin rod. It's 15 centimetre foot, but I've left the centimetre foot section there. And that's with five pound Maxima, all the way down. That's going to <coughs> ultra wire, four BB stick. I've had this float years, nearly as old as me. <laughs> Brilliant float. And that's just on to the. Uh, I took the bands off, so it's running on the five pound Max Dima, and then it's coming down to three point eight pound again Max Dima line, and that's pretty much all the way through. And it's got a big bulk of number ones. There's number four underneath, and then a number eight shot. I'm just putting on a little worm. And I'm literally just trotting it right through where the trees are. Just show you that. Just holding the bolt shot and letting it swing out. Away. I've not used this centre pin reel, so old Sheffield style centre pin in years. So. Taking a little bit of while, I'll we'll put the ratchet on. I think that's dragging the bottom now. Get that bit closer, that was nowhere near enough. I want to get it right to the edge of the tree. That's it. I haven't got a long shot, it just starts to come up. I can see the weeds there. <laughs> and a good gudgeon, one after the other, on the stick float. Put very little bait in today, put very little bait in. Nice little gudgeon. But there's loads of slugs, I'm gonna have to go and get some slugs in a minute. Before the sun comes up and they disappear. You get a nice big bit of worm. At least I know if I get a bite now on the ledger rod. Um, I'm going to give it one more run with this because I don't want to be doing two at once, if you know what I mean. I want to be just fishing one or the other. But I'm just, just going to show you to start with. holding it back. I'm going to have to pull it out a bit there because that's where the weeds are. 
hold that. Let that float come round. I can have a little bit more longer of a trot and then just run it beside the weeds. Yeah, that, that worm's been had pretty much. That's just dragging the bottom. Okay, take this worm off. I'll try a piece of sweet corn, or I'll try meat again. Try a bit of piece of meat. You don't get a long, you don't get, you get one opportunity to hit it, and that's it. What I did with the meat yesterday is filled up a little tub of boiling water, dropped the meat in it, just washed it off, quickly chilled it, diced it up, and then once it was diced again, I just put it in a sieve, plunked it into the boiling water for a second, just swish it round, it just gets rid of any fat, and then dunk it in ice cold water just to firm it up, and it makes it sink a lot better. meat already. We'll have one more go at this because I don't want to smash the peg if you know what I mean. It won't create too much disturbance. Lovely little, that's a chub, lovely little chub, lovely little chub, on the caster. Right, we know that's all set up and working. I want to build this peg up first, just before going on it later on. I'm going to put this rod down and concentrate on the ledger for a bit. It's really nice using the centre pin, really nice. You're sort of like really in contact with everything. Obviously it's just literally a one-to-one -one gear ra ratio, so You literally feel everything. It's nice and light. Three ball bearings. It just peels off. Follows the flow really well. I'll right, just put this out of the way. But I just brought a little selection with me. Some Avon, some stick floats, and I have them all made up on winders. I've got a 
ultra big stick, that's 33 BB. We've got Preston 8x4, that's the uh, big dome top, which is quite nice. We'll just keep them all on winders, so all done, ready to go. That's a Peter Drennan one, which is nice, 5 BB. And one of the big Spigot Avons. This one's 6 BB. I've got a bigger, two bigger ones at home. 7 BB and 9 BB. But uh, it's with, that's with an Olivet, but it's not that fast flowing here, so. 4 BB. I, I do like wire stick floats. It just seems to ride the, the water a lot better and be a lot more stable. Obviously the real thin wire is not getting affected by the tow. Just cuts through the water with, and then with the bulk down. Standard stick float if you want. Okay guys, what I'm doing is, I've got a size 10 camera and animal hook. It's an 8 mil halibut pellet under there. And I've got a bit of the spicy and do your paste. And what I've done is, just so I can feed it a little bit more sort of accurately in. I've got all my hemp here. My hemp and meat. I just put a small handful of casters through there. Literally a dozen bits of uh, sweet corn. And the 4 mil pellets. So they seem to be responding to the four mils they're sort of like really getting turned on to them so I mix the four mils in there we've got a mixture of four mils meat hemp and that he hemp is a little bit of chili oil on there and loads of garlic powder a little bit of smoked paprika and some chili powder it's really oily so I can just catapult that just where I want it trot it along also what I'm doing now is I've ditched away with the bite alarm I'm just literally going back conventional style putting the rod on the knee I'm on the rod rest I can feel the knocks and vibrations and as soon as that tip goes round I'm connecting a lot better let's get this plopped in over there the rod on my knee, got my hand on the spool so I can just feel any sort of little knocks, vibrations. Just respond to the bite a lot quicker. there I'm really loving this paste really loving the paint I tried it with just the 8 mil and just getting a couple of little taps probably because it just smells of the paste but as soon as the paste is gone it's, it's not as good oh there's a bite there's a bite knock 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 knock, knock. Nipping at the page, nibbling, nibbling. I mean, if you get a big chub or something, then it just flies around.
what I was thinking of doing is give another 10 minutes on here. I will just put a pellet on. And I'm going to flip it to the left under that tree. Put the bait runner on, put it on the thing, and then I'll start using the stick float. Try and feed a little bit shorter so I can run the stick float along the edge of there. And as I say, I want to try and bring him out. I don't want to really fight him in the lion's den if I, if I have to. Unless I really have to. Well, I've just put a pellet on with a bit of taste, and I think I've just got the world record gudgeon. Look at the size of that for a gudgeon. That's huge. I'm no better good than that size. I'm gonna weigh him. <laughs> Look at it. Look at that meat. Right in the corner of his mouth. That's a gudgeon and a half. I don't know what the record is. <clears throat> it's probably about three ounces. Stunning little fish. Chunky. Oh, I'll get him back. I'm having a nice bit of fun on the stick float. Fish are chuck really on a little bit of worm. Let's get minnows and gudgeon and dace and that. You snap all that right down. Just using a tiny bit of worm and just holding it back really. Just holding it back, holding it back. So I can feel it when the float goes under. Slowing it down. I know it's 4BB, but I've got it shotted so anything touches it's going under. Just getting used to this reel. <laughs> And another tiny little minnow. Right I wish I bought my maggots now, and I didn't. I left them all at home deliberately. I've just shallowed up a tiny bit, like literally about a centimetre or two. Just holding it back. Slowing it down.
bum bum. Yeah, what the hell's that? It's all right with me. I'm just going to roll a tiny bit of meat on like that. You can only have one chance with this though. As soon as that goes, it goes, it's gone. Yeah. That's the problem with that meat being so soft. You've tried picking some meat from. Pretty much at the end of the swim there. It's not ideally where I want it. Or even closer than that. Go back on a bit of caster, a bit of caster. Let's try and look at that. Try double caster. Yeah, it's lovely and warm this morning, as it always is, first thing. And now it just gets chilly. Oh, it's a bit chilly. I was supposed to go out yesterday, but... And, uh... That's where I want it. Skim in that bush. Another little minnow. Yeah, I was going to go out yesterday to Buckingham, but out of a mad, busy week at work, and I was just so tired. I had a few beers and I had a lot of computer stuff to do. I still got about four films to put together. I did one yesterday.
you know, a lot of a couple of events on a wake and a wedding for 50 people and that each one. Then on Saturday I was on my own. Somebody else phoned in sick as in all we And when it's me, they never get cover. When it's everybody else, they get cover. Because I'm in charge, they think I could just deal with it. It's not right, it's not fair. And if I oh, he'll cope. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> There's so many of these little minnows and gudgeon and that. Right. Put this down and go for some big fish. I'm going to give the worm a go, but my worms are pretty much knackered at the minute because I've just dropped the whole bloody tub in the water. Dropped it in the river. You know what happened? Got a bit of a tremble on the uh, feeder rod. Went to grab it. The bait tub was in my lap and I just flicked it into the water. Yeah. I managed to salvage a few. Yeah, I was going to go to Buckingham and do a feeder session, and, but straight in a way I'm glad I didn't now because uh, I've got loads of uh, computer stuff to do and I'll do another w film when I get home today. But next week my days are sp split up a bit. I've got, um, well, I've got the day off and then I've got Saturday off. Then I'm uh, in Sunday, <clears throat> then off Monday, so. There's a bite. I think I get more fishing done when <clears throat> my days are broken up with just two one days because I have to do something. But when I got two days together, I think, oh, so I just chill tonight and have a few beers and that. Uh, so I'll probably be out Saturday. And then I get on Monday. So I will go to Buckingham on Saturday, early Saturday morning. Bit of a feeder fishing. What I was thinking is, <clears throat> I'm going to do an old schooly sort of thing, or an old school method with feeder fishing. Oh. I wish I had a smaller stick float now. Um, I might try the little 3 BB one in a minute. Double caster. Get some more bait in. Not feeding that much today. Yeah, probably going to go uh, see if the ball and in method still work. I'll go down there, 
I'll wait till it's not quite slack tide, but just easing up. I'll have to find out the tides and that. And sort of like 10 minutes before it's, it's slack water, I should bought bait up with a dozen, 15 big cricket balls of, um, oh, that was a big chub. Missed it. One thing I'm noticing as well, they respond to a bit more heavy bait in here. I've noticed that when I was going quiet, it's gone dead. But that one was right under the tree. Yeah, so I'm going to sort of like do 15 cricket balls. of ground bait and then fish over the top of it and see if that works. Okay, we've had a bit of a complete play around. I've lost another fish on there. Just ripped off again. Uh, I can't seem to hit them. Anyway, we've had a complete sort of re-rig of the stick float. I'm just now catching nice dace and that. So I've stuck with the same stick, uh, stick float. I've cut the rig, put it through the bottom eye. For some unknown reason, it was looped round here as well, so I sorted that out. Um, <laughs> I've just dropped that down the edge, a minnow. And I've just gone out with a basic, <clears throat> strung out, shotting pattern. So I've got two number eights in the bottom. I've got one number one, about mid depth, and the rest are bulked underneath the float. And it's given me a lot better presentation and sort of registering the bite. What I'm going to do with this is cast that big rod right out of the way in a minute. But I'll show you because it's given me a lot better opportunity to flip the float where I want it in that gap and then run it beside the trees, which I'll show you that now. You can put a bit more bait in. <clears throat> okay, I'll switch you around. Float seems to be travelling better, sitting better. I might just put another number six on there. But I'm seeing the bites. <coughs> Definitely needs one more shot, mate. Have a look. Where's the tester? The tester's alright. That's where I want it. That's where I want it. Right over. That's it. Right hogging them trees. Slow it down a bit. Now I know that's where the dace and chub are. <coughs> They're right under them trees. Look at that. Just quickly put another number six on. I'll move that BD up a bit, I think.
I ate it, so. Uh, no. Where is it? Boom, oh, Bennett. This is hard work. <laughs> Where's the split? Takes me half an hour to put a split shot on these days. There's just there we go. Okay. That's just flowing down so much better now. And that's where I want it. Hugging them three. No, missed that. I let the line go. I don't want to let that line bow. I need to hold that back a bit more. Better if you hold the bottom shot and then just swing it. Pull that one out, what's going on here? That's it. Get them trees. They're literally underneath, as you can probably see. They're literally hiding underneath the trees. Chub, little chub, look. Yeah, so Saturday probably get down to Buckingham, as I say, and go for the uh, <coughs> big ball in effect. See if that still works. And then probably a whip or two and a bolognese rod, or what I was thinking is just to flow decent, I might have set up a decent waggler rod. Ah, in the tree. Lucky. <coughs> right, let's get this back over there again. Okay, what I'm doing is, just got one of the bands. I'm getting a big bit of paste. Just putting that on the bend of the hook. I'm literally moulding it around everything. Pushing that up, mould it around the whole hook. I'm just leaving the point nicely exposed there. Just gonna press that down, just like that. as well. That's it. Perfect. Just leaving that hook. Like that. Now I just fed two pouch fulls again.
okay guys, that was a secret swim. I just had an absolute slam round. I had a change of tactics, I miss, missed so many bites. I'm just going to quickly tear these uh, scales. Weigh this net, it's the only way I can do it. Well, that's Ted, I'm on zero. Four pound, one ounces. It looks a lot bigger than that. It looks a lot bigger than four pound one. Four pound one ounces, yeah, exactly. Right. Four pound one. That's a big four pound one. Look at the size of this, guys. Gently does it. Look at that for an awesome chub. Tip slam round. Eight mil bit of halibut pellet banded on. And a great big piece of the Dooja spicy meat paste on a six mustad hook. Right, let's get this back. Let's get a picture. I let it rest in the let for five minutes beforehand. What an awesome beast. Right. Let's get this back. Baiting up sort of like half to two thirds of a pouch well every time seems to be working. I just couldn't get into the bites to stick initially. But uh, change my tactics, put a slightly long hook link on, size six. Mustard hook. I put a band. One of the ones that has got like a, where you put the hook through, big eight mil on there, and a big bit of paste around the whole lot. And you just left the hook point exposed, or just just poking through, and that was enough to snarl it. Oh, we'll get this back in. Oh, result, what will be fishing on the drop, a single maggot or caster, and just allowing the bait, you know, a couple of number eights or tens down the line just for a nice natural fall. But when you want to bolt the bait down a wire stick. Right, let's go and get some of these bad boys. It's loads of slugs. And I'm just keeping the rod on my knee today. I'm gonna move this out of the way. This fight alarm. I don't need it. Hit a lot more bites, just rest it on my knee and over this rest here. I can feel it, watch it, feel the pluck, see the tape, the strike conventionally. It's getting a bit warm now, so I'm trying to keep it in my bag. What the hell's that? Not happy with that, so take a look at this. No, I'm not happy with it, so I'm not going to cast it out until I'm 100% happy. Right, let's get this 
Nope, nope, nope. Do it again. Okay. I'm not going to cast it in if I'm not happy. Perfect. And I'm literally just resting it on my knee. Keep this paste in the bucket, lid on and everything. Again, that was literally right in the trees under the bushes there. There's a little rattle there. It'll rattle on the tip. It's a small fish. For the big boys, the chub and the barbell and that, they won't come out under from underneath there. I lost a small chub earlier on on the stick float, but uh, Right, hugging the trees line. I just needed a bit of a scratch the head and change of tactics because the bait was just getting robbed every time, but the wily chub. You know how to suck the paste off them. noise is some bird in the description sounds like a raptor type of bird kestrel buzzard or something like that Probably going to go a bit quiet after that big chub. back on the stick float for a bit and just let this bit settle. I'm just going to give this five minutes, if nothing I'll bring it in. I 
got to try the stick float for 10 minutes or so and just let it settle. Okay guys, sorry about the solo, so I position it the best I can. I've given it about 10-15 minutes on the stick float. I'm just catching a fish or chuck really. They're only like little dace and chub and minnows and gudgeon and stuff like that. It's a fish or chuck, just basically on single caster, trotting it down beside the trees. Starting to put the bait through now. A small half a handful every sort of time. I've moved the left rod right under that big bush there. I'm going to move it out now. I'll cast it back where I normally cast it. I've had enough of the old stick float for the minute, last minute or two. A dried worm, tiny bits of paste, meat. But it's, yeah, it's just tiny little chub and dace and gudgeon and minnows and stuff. It's good fun. I'm slowly getting used to this centre pin. It's great for trotting, it's brilliant for trotting. Nasty ratchet then. <laughs> That's just to use it to lock it basically. Just put that down now. Yeah, I'm just doing a basic strung out shirt button. I've got three number eights. And then number one, sort of two thirds of the way up, or a third of the way down from the float, and the rest of the number ones under the float, and just giving it a nice gentle fall and trotting it along. That noise was a drone, it's been whizzing past the boys. I had the 15 foot rod, a drone flew up at the last second and was going to hit the rod. So I don't know who's been flying that around. Obviously well skilled pilot because it's been whizzing underneath these trees and along the river here. I'll pull this one in and get it back out underneath that uh, big tree. Okay, just gone back to worm, it's gone a bit quiet. I can get it right underneath the tree, I don't know if it's just because of the weight balance. When you've got the paste on it seems to swing forward but when you've got the worm on it it follows the lead so you can get right underneath the tree but it's not a little perch there you go well but i'm going to go back on the paste now and just stick it out i think for the rest there's so many bites i mean one after the other after the other after the other there's so many fish here but i think it's just perseverance just picking your way through it and just hoping you can get a decent fish Okay guys, it's just gone 11 o'clock, well it's nearly quarter past, I packed up at 11 o'clock, after that big chub had gone really really quiet, I ended up just putting a big bit of pellet on, uh, 8 mil pellet, uh, and a great big bit of paste, wrapping it around, so just the point of the hooks poking through the paste, and putting that on the bait runner system, on the alarm, and just leaving that to do its thing, but not a knock. I was getting plenty of fish on the stick float, one after the other, little chublets, little dace, gudgeon, bleak, all that sort of stuff, one after the other on caster, but uh, nothing big today, so, I know the big chub, but yeah, this little stamp of the fish was definitely a lot lot smaller today, and, and it seemed to be a lot more finicky, but that water is a good, a good two foot, maybe even three foot down from what it was last week, for whatever reason, and it's a lot clearer, a lot less flow. A lot clearer and there's some uh, sort of concrete paving to my right that was underwater last week but that's all dry now so yeah probably not ideal conditions but I would have been better coming yesterday because yesterday was darker it was, it was a lot moody and there's a little bit of rain it was, it was still hot but and muggy but uh, there's a lot, to, but today is a lot brighter and a lot hotter, I think, as well. God, it's absolutely roasting in this car. Absolutely roasting. But, uh, yeah, not bad. I think I've got the feed in a little bit wrong today. That sort of uh, pouch for every sort of cast or sort of half a pack didn't, didn't quite work. I think um, getting there, sticking four to six 
pouch falls in, p creating a nice bed, um, and then fishing over it and then fish it out is probably the, a better way to go. But you just don't know. The conditions were different to last week, so you can't really say, can you? Um, but they di didn't seem quite right today. The bites were quite finicky. Even the, the chub bites, they were just vicious one rod and that's it, gone. Um, but need to know now to start burying the hook inside the paste and get as much as you can covered. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. A nice big chub there and there's plenty of little fish. I didn't put them all on camera today because it was literally one a chuck and they're like all blades. But anyway, take care. Tight lines, all the best guys, and I'll see you in another video. Bye for now.